Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Suzuki. Uh, I'm very happy to be here now. And uh, my talk is uh, about, uh, you know, about the input effect of shadowing and training in L second language acquisition. Yes, uh, this is a um, briefly abstract uh, or by information of my myself. Uh, but uh, time is so limited. So, uh, and this is a book that Suzuki introduced, Mr. Dr. Suzuki introduced. Uh, last year, I published this book, Shadowing as a Practice in Second Language Acquisition. Okay, today I'm going to talk about uh, effects of shadowing, input effect of shadowing uh, in Second Language Acquisition. You know, many people admit that many Japanese are so, find it so difficult to uh, have a communication, particularly interactive communication. And in the interactive communication, uh, which is involved, and the three processes are involved. One is a speech understanding. We have to understand the speech addressed to us, and also think about uh, how to respond, conceptualize this message. And also we produce speech after that. So for example, in this conversation, B is, B has to, uh, understand, first of all, A is utterance, then conceptualize a message response, and then uh, verbalize a response message. This is not good for many Japanese. And also there is another diff, uh, factor that is uh, uh, language learning difficulty ranking. So this is a uh, difficult language learning difficulty ranking for native speakers of English. And as for the Japanese, you know, for native speakers, Japanese is a category five difficulty language. Um, so this is another reason why we are so um, uh, handicapped in sensing and handicapped in learning a second language, particularly uh, interactive communication. So far, second language studies have proposed uh, many models or theories. First one is a doctor's questions input theory. This is very famous, and language acquisition uh, is, uh, you know, occurs uh, through a comprehensible input. And comprehensible input is not only a necessary, but a, just a sufficient condition for language acquisition, for language learner, learning. You know. uh, Dr. Swain uh, proposed the output theory. Uh, she said uh, learners should notice uh, is noted gap between understanding and production, so particularly the uh, mapping between forms and meanings. And uh, in the last uh, year's book, I proposed a practice, pra practice theory connecting input processing and output production, particularly for, Jap for, uh, for the Japanese learners of English, whose mother tongue is quite distant from English. And I emphasized uh, in that book four points, uh, four basic points, or four pillars, uh, which uh, makes uh, language learning successful. Input processing, practice, and output production, and also metacognitive monitoring. Then, what is shadowing? Um, what is shadowing? Shadowing is a kind of online task of repeating exactly what we hear. But on the contrary, repeating, it's a usually called uh, listen and repeat task, is a you know, uh, uh, kind of repetition, but uh, there is a pause. And after, um, after the sound uh, of speech is heard, uh, we make a repetition during the pause. Uh, this parallel reading is uh, doing, the same, doing the two things, two tasks at the same time, uh, understanding already understanding uh, the speech and also looking at the manuscript and speaking and repeating, okay? But actually shadowing itself is a very multiple processes, involves multiple processes. So in, in, in shadowing, first of all, we make a speech, uh, we uh, perceive speech. That means uh, we make a, a mental, phonological or phonetic constructions representation, excuse me, representations in our minds. 
Then also we have to make analysis of grammatical analysis or semantic analysis, semantic grammatical processing. And then, of course, we vocalize the sounds we heard, speech we heard. And uh, also we are listening to what we shadowed. Mm, what we shadowed, we are listening as an auditory feedback. So uh, um, this is a summary and input effect, a, pra a practice effect, output effect, and monetary effect. Today in my talk, I want to concentrate on the first input, input effect of shadowing in, in uh, listening comprehension. This is, this is a figure which summarizes the four, uh, four effects of shadowing. Okay, listening comprehension, basically speaking, listening comprehension consists of two stages. One is a perception stage, the other is a comprehension stage. In the perception stage, as I said, we construct a mental phonological representation. And in comprehension, there are a variety of processes are involved, lexical processing and syntactic, semantic analysis, contextual processing, and also schema-based processing. So far, there are uh, several studies which suggest the effects of input effects of shadowing in, in second language operation. For example, Tamai's classical study, a very famous classical study, Tamai 2005, uh, trained students, particip participants, uh, for five days, uh, each day, two hours, two hour tra shadowing training per day. And uh, as a pre and mid and post test, uh, there are five different tests are prepared. And as for the listening comprehension, uh, excuse me. Maybe did a user. As for listening comprehension, there is a, a difference, statistical difference between, significant difference between pre test and post test. But before that, uh, there is a, a so say, increase of uh, shadowing correctly shadowed rates. So successful shadowing increases. And also the utterance speed increases. Then after that, uh, their listening comprehension has much improved. This is a main result in his studies, 2005. And also uh, there is a Mochizuki study, which is 2006, uh, for the participants who were a female junior high school student. Uh, he uh, he uh, made a two groups, an experimental group is a shadowing training group, and control group is a, like a listening and pronunciation drill group. And uh, so the results, compare, in comparison with the pre-test, uh, in the post-test, shadowing group perform, outperformed the control group uh, significantly. Uh, this is a study uh, by Sakoda, uh, who targeted uh, Japanese learners, Japanese, I mean, the Korean learners of Japanese. And uh, in, in her study, uh, there are two uh, groups, and one is a training of shadowing group, and the other is a transcription training group. And five different uh, tests were prepared. Uh, like a spot, Spot is a, a simple proficiency-oriented test and the dictation and so on, and listening span test also included. And result, main results is uh, mm, both, group, uh, group, both groups showed a significant increase in spot and dictation scores. But only group A achieved a significantly better score at uh, post test on the listening span task, listening span test. So from now, I want to talk about three, in my opinion, three possible theoretical backgrounds explaining the effect of shadowing on listening comprehension. One is the motor theory of speech production. This theory is rather old. It was first proposed by Lieberman and his, his co-workers in 1960s. This is a very old one, but 
still not so de much demonstrated. But in 2004, uh, these uh, scholars, Wilson et al., uh, confirmed using fMRI study, fMRI uh, research. And uh, uh, task was, uh, you know, to uh, teach, uh, no, sorry, English speaking British adults, native speakers of English, uh, listen to just passively uh, um, non words, non word sound. And uh, the result shows there is a, you see, uh, there is activation of the premotor area, BA6, broadband area 6, and primary motor area, BA4. Like these. So this is uh, around the auditory area, but the motor area is uh, activated in this way. So BA6 and BA4 uh, is concerned with the motor cortex, motor areas. And I think the second uh, possible plausible explanation is uh, a McGurk effect. If time permits, I want to show a video of McGurk effect. But anyway, I want to uh, continue my talking. Uh, this is a, a effect. When, for example, when we hear a person pronouncing the sound ba, 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 we can uh, recognize the sound as ba. That's natural. That's natural. However, when we hear the same person speaking ba, but watch the video of the face of that person pronouncing ga. We will not perceive the sound. Uh, we, we will not sound, sound correctly as ba, but rather uh, da or ga. You see, as this uh, image shows. So what does it tell, tell us about, about human speech perception? Uh, we do not perceive speech as it is. We actually uh, gather, collect a lot of information, particularly articulatory visual image of the sound in the mind. And we construct that sound image and superimpose that image onto the sound we hear. This is a kind of a system or mm, mechanism called a kind of mirroring system or projection in recent uh, 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 cognitive science, uh, you know, uh, studies projection has been proposed to perceive to perceive visual objects, to perceive visual actions, so on. We uh, make a projection on our minds, on our brains, a kind of mirroring system. We can say also, it's a kind of mirroring system. So as with mirror neurons, mirror systems, it was uh, first found by Isurati and at all in 19, uh, 1990s in Palma, uh, Italy, in the Palma University of Palma. You know, they, uh, well, they found that uh, in, in the macaque brain, macaque is a monkey, macaque brain, uh, premotor cortex, F5, they found that this kind of mirroring system, mirroring neurons. Uh, so, uh, so far, for, as for the humans, uh, not only the PM, premolar area, BA, in the case of humans, BA6, uh, or a supplementary motor area, uh, also inferior parietal lobule and inferior uh, frontal gyrus. Uh, those are the kind of network for mirroring in humans. So, uh, and also there is a this is an interesting hypothesis, not demonstrated, but interesting hypothesis is that the monkeys F5, but, uh, we can say there's a region called F5 um, that is a uh, uh, roughly speaking, roughly corresponds to uh, Broca's area, almost roughly, yeah, corresponds to Broca's area in humans. So language, uh, language is an invention. It may be a language invention, by a uh, kind of mirror system, mirroring system. So how, how much is needed? <laughs> oh, three or four minutes I have, maybe. Uh, so uh, look at this. Uh, 
uh, a five is, uh, uh, you know, almost uh, corresponds to near uh, Broca's area, I think. And so this may, be, may lead me to, uh, to, to, to the possibility that uh, when learning either L1 or L2, we need to activate our mirroring system, which is a kind of mirroring system is a part of it, a social brain, interactive social brain system, part of it. And it may be possible that shadowing, though not visual, but auditory uh, system, uh, auditory training, may enhance our mirroring system activation in L2 acquisition. So, as I said, uh, you know, we perceive visual objects and actions, other, others visual objects or others actions through mirroring or projections rather or, or in recent terms. And in the same way, we perceive speech, speech uh, sounds through creating a kind of articulatory images, articulatory images uh, in our brains. So this is actually uh, an effect of shadowing pra process, shadowing practice. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this may be a, uh, may, this is a hypothetical consideration, but uh, I think this will be a very plausible uh, hypothesis. Anyway, just almost a time. Thank you very much for our listening, for your listening until the last. Thank you very much. <laughs>